Hello, everyone, and welcome to another community conversation here on Facebook Live. I'm Mayor Eric Pappenfuss, and uh, it is Fridays at noon, so we're glad you're joining us. Today's topic is going to be the 4th of July, how we can celebrate uh, together as a community while staying safe. We have a new and exciting sort of hybrid festival this year, and we're going to talk all about it. And I'm pleased to say we're joined by a number of guests. Let me quickly uh, introduce them now. Uh, we're going to have Megan Roby, who's the events director for the city. Uh, she will be reporting live from City Island, where we are setting up most of our uh, food truck activity. Um, we will also have Kristen and Drew Cordell from a Doughhead Waffles Food Truck. Looking forward to that. We have Devin Drabeck, Director of Communications and Marketing from Explore HBG. We have Akrit Mehta, who's a branch manager from MidPen Bank. We have Mickey Spain, who's an entertainer. And yes, we will again have some live entertainment at the end of this show. We have John Campbell, Director of Business Owner Engagement of Wilmington Trust, which is a part of the M&T family. And we have Todd Vanderwoody, Executive Director from the Harrisburg Downtown Improvement District, since uh, this 4th of July is also corresponding with our Saturdays in the City event. So we're going to talk about all of that and more in just a moment. But uh, as always, I want to begin with a, a few general announcements uh, about uh, the week to come and the week that we've, um, we've just concluded. Uh, the first announcement is that City Hall will be reopening to the public uh, this coming Monday at 8.30 a.m. Uh, we hope everyone uh, uh, can uh, can come to City Hall to conduct their business. It'll be a little bit different if you do visit. Uh, this time, uh, you'll have to pass by a thermal camera for a temperature check when you come in the building. Masks are, of course, required both inside and outside, and uh, we can talk more about that as we talk about the, the festival and other events. Um, we have new uh, hand sanitizing stations throughout City Hall. And many of our employees are still telecommuting. So while City Hall will be open, we're encouraging people, if and when possible, uh, to consider uh, an, an appointment in advance. And maybe some business can still be conducted via phone or Zoom. Uh, importantly, though, Treasury will be open. And it will be open one day a week serving the public, only on Wednesday. So City Hall will be open uh, 8.30 to 2.30 every day. Treasury just on Wednesdays. But on days that Treasury is closed, you can still pay your bills using the Treasury drop box, which is located near the free parking station in the back of the building. Um, I think that uh, that addresses that. If there are any questions, uh, you can call 311 or you can uh, reach out to us uh, in City Hall. Um, in addition, tonight, uh, I just got off the phone with the fire chief. Tonight is our community fireworks event. Uh, we are doing this, uh, as I hope you know, at four different playgrounds throughout uh, the city of Harrisburg. We're going to be at Sunshine Park. We're going to be at 7th and Radnor. Uh, we're going to be at Reservoir Park near the basketball courts, and we are going to be at the city's newest green space, the site of the former South 14th Street sinkhole. Uh, if you go tonight, the event starts at 7 and will conclude at 10. Uh, you will find uh, the fire department and uh, fire trucks parked at each of those different locations and a designated area set up where people can um, uh, ignite and enjoy fireworks, hopefully safely. We've asked the community not to be setting these fireworks off um, day in and day out uh, in close proximity to occupied structures, uh, which is illegal, but rather um, hopefully to come to this controlled event on July 3rd. Um, uh, so come on out. Uh, uh, get, you can get a chance to check out the, the fire trucks and engage with firefighters as well, learn a little bit about the Pennsylvania fireworks law and, um, and how to safely uh, 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 do fireworks. And uh, that's, uh, this is a new event uh, sponsored by the city and, again, uh, hoping to address uh, the, the nuisance fireworks issue, which is an issue plaguing not just Harrisburg but really all cities throughout the, throughout the country. We also have uh, a new initiative that we talked about last week, and I think Moman has the technology to, to bring it up right now. We are doing a fireworks uh, uh, GIS mapping uh, initiative here for the city, and we're encouraging people, if you hear fireworks, to please 
call 311 um, or go online to harrisburgpa.gov slash fireworks. Uh, if you go online, you can simply drag your cursor over a map of the city and pinpoint or click right where you heard the firework. If you, um, if you call 311, just say what you heard and when you heard it so that we can uh, begin mapping this. We're, we're seeing uh, very clear patterns and, and clusters. Moment, if you go up to the just south of McClay section in Midtown, you'll see uh, quite a clear pattern there. We think this map is going to help inform our uh, proactive uh, patrols. We're going to be sitting down with the police and fire and others this coming week to really look at the data. But as we move past July 4th, please continue to call in. Don't call 911. Again, we've been trying to say uh, don't call 911 unless it's a, a true uh, emergency. But if it's just to report fireworks, you would help us by engaging with our virtual GIS fireworks mapping project. So there's the data so far. You can uh, look at that again. If you go to uh, harrisburgpa.gov slash fireworks, you can, you can log in and report what you're hearing. Uh, so tonight's event and uh, the fireworks map uh, continue. Uh, the city of Harrisburg also, uh, many of you may or may not have heard, but we made some national news on Thursday in that the United States Supreme Court uh, declined to um, offer an injunction in what was a uh, abortion rights case that, uh, that that centered on Harrisburg's use of a buffer zone. We have a, a law in Harrisburg which uh, prohibits um, uh, protesters within a, a certain number of feet of, uh, of an abortion clinic. You see this uh, if you've ever traveled uh, down 2nd Street uh, past Planned Parenthood on certain days. It can be very, very difficult. We've defended that buffer zone. It's gone up through the courts, and just this past Thursday, the Supreme Court uh, refused the plaintiff's request to issue an injunction that would have stopped that buffer zone. So we were pleased by that outcome. And uh, what happens now, it's not over. It still goes back to the, uh, to the lower court uh, to be heard, but the Supreme Court definitely um, uh, at least cited on the city's behalf, and we're, we were pleased that they declined to, to grant that um, injunction. Uh, city of Harrisburg and the city of Chicago were the two cities that were, were challenged and had made their way all the way up to the United States Supreme Court. Um, we've talked a little bit about masks, but I, I just want to start this by saying not only are we incur uh, requiring masks uh, now if you're coming to uh, City Hall, but we will also be requiring them for the, for the weekend. I wanted to show off my new City of Harrisburg mask provided to me by our facilities director. Um, and uh, I'm only not wearing it now, so you can see my lips and, uh, um, and, and better, uh, uh, better hear me as we're having this event today. But um, uh, please, everyone, uh, wear a mask. And uh, we want this to be a safe, a safe and wonderful weekend. And indeed, we want what we're able to do here for the 4th of July to, um, to continue for Capona at the end of the summer. And we can do that if everyone uh, cooperates and recognizes we're in this together. Um, and, uh, and, and this is, uh, is going to be a real test. I know all eyes are on Harrisburg, um, especially in light of uh, the mask requirement. We're proceeding ahead with fireworks because we think we can do it safely. Um, and uh, I believe we'll do, we can do it safely, but we need everybody to cooperate. Um, and then finally, in terms of updates, uh, I wanted to give you two updates from Harrisburg City Council this past week. The first has to do with the proposed police advisory board. There were a lot of comments that were submitted uh, uh, to City Council this past week. In fact, we had a four and a half hour uh, Zoom City Council meeting. It was uh, uh, contentious and important. Uh, and we are going to be having a second City Council workshop hearing that will also um, uh, be able to continue discussing this advisory board, and that's coming up this Tuesday at 5.30 p.m. And again, if you want to comment not only on the police advisory board, but on other matters that are before Harrisburg City Council, the email is public comment at harrisburgpa.gov. You can send an email, uh, and they will uh, they can read their read your comments at the at the council meeting. I know that city council is then planning to break for a summer recess, but the conversation isn't going to stop. There are plans to have public engagement sessions in July and August, so that I think when council returns at the end of August, uh, we will be in a position where hopefully we can pass an advisory board. My opinion on this board is that it's a good step in the right direction 
direction, and it's something that we really desperately need here in Harrisburg. It may not be all that everybody wants, but um, uh, it, I, I don't think we should let the uh, perfect uh, get in the way of the good. I think it will it will be a benefit, because, and I do think it will will actually be able to hold elected officials and and the police department accountable. One should not underestimate the power of. Uh, the bully pulpit and the power of uh, having a public uh, forum that makes recommendations. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, we can talk about subpoena power, we can talk about uh, logistically how things would work, but in reality, um, this advisory board is much needed and I think will be a powerful tool. Uh, and then finally, uh, City Council on Tuesday heard a proposal um, uh, from my office to offer um, a, a new incentive for businesses that are trying to get back on their, their feet after having um, uh, suffered during this uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic, which is certainly not over, but nonetheless, as businesses are trying to, to reopen in the green phase, uh, the City of Harrisburg is offering uh, what will be a one-time credit on sanitation bills. This is for businesses, either businesses or landlords of businesses that are licensed in the city of Harrisburg that were forced to either scale back or shut down due to the coronavirus pandemic. Um, and uh, it is a forward-looking credit. So it, if, uh, if applied for, it will then uh, be placed as a credit on trash bills moving forward in the final quarter of this year. So you can have your September, October, November, and December trash bills reduced by applying for this program. How does it work? Well, if you qualify and you have to be licensed, you have to be a city business, you have to have uh, not already received a credit, um, then uh, we will be sending out a, a simple form in the mail uh, that asks you to explain how COVID-19 impacted your business and to certify that you qualify in those ways. You send that back to us by August 1st and you will qualify for the credit program. So that letter, which I just finished reviewing uh, this past week, will be going out next week. Uh, and uh, needs to be returned uh, to the, the, the city by the end of July or by August 1 to qualify for the credit so that we can apply it for the final quarter of the year. So this is a big deal. Um, unlike the uh, business grant program, which uh, was sort of uh, utilized for the here and the now, this is something, uh, a little bit of relief that businesses can look forward to moving forward as well. And I know everyone trying to get back on their feet is, um, is struggling on how to prioritize the bills and keep up with, uh, keep up with things with, uh, with business being down. So it's something the city could do and will be doing, and I hope people will take advantage of it, and I hope you'll help us uh, spread the word. So look for that letter this week. All right. The, uh, the rest of our show today is to be discussing this weekend and our 4th of July Food Truck Festival, which, as everyone knows, food trucks and fireworks has really become a, a signature annual event for the city of Harrisburg on the 4th of July that typically attracts uh, thousands of people to Riverfront Park. Now, this year is going to be a little bit different. Uh, we are, um, there, there's, but there's still going to be plenty of fun and plenty of delicious food. We've scaled down the number of food trucks. We are not doing it in Riverfront Park and along Front Street. We're rather doing it on City Island. We have a hybrid in-person online event. Um, and all of this is running tomorrow from noon until 9 o'clock. So from noon till 9 on Saturday, July 4th, uh, you can come out and enjoy this event and enjoy our park system. And then at 9.15, Right about as darkness falls, uh, we will have um, we will have our wonderful fireworks display. We've got 15 food trucks this year, a little uh, smaller than than usual. We've got farm show milkshakes, and they will all be on City Island. And then we have musical ent entertainment and kids activities that will be occurring virtually online. So we're going to discuss all that now and give you a sense of exactly what's happening. But I thought no better way to begin on this beautiful Friday afternoon than by reaching out to Megan Roby, who is directing this event for the city of Harrisburg and who is currently live on City Island. Hello, Megan. How are you Hello. doing? I'm doing well. We are here in City Island in the north lot. Um, I will give you a quick preview of what to expect tomorrow when you arrive. Um, so as you can see, we have cones that are all um, the food truck lines here on City Island. Um, when you arrive, there will be one entrance area. Um, so that is that big space that you're seeing directly in front of you. 
Um, we will need to know which food truck you are going to get in line uh, because there will be no menus available when you arrive. Um, so those are all available within the Facebook event and on the website. Um, so we encourage you to check those digital maps out before you arrive um, so that you know which food truck line you would wish to enter. And then when you enter, you will be able to see the signs that are here in front of me. Um, we can see the sign here for Doe Heads Waffles. Um, so this will be their food truck line. As you can see, we do have their, their line with the cone spaced six feet apart. Um, so you will progress through their line. When you reach the end of the cones, um, obviously will be their ordering menu. You will order and take your food. Um, there will then be one exit. So you will need to exit um, upon receiving your food. Um, at the end of the exit, you will then have a hand washing station, um, which will be available to wash your hands um, prior to leaving. Um, we do encourage you to bring lawn chairs and blankets um, if you'd like to have a picnic in the park where you're welcome to take your food home as well. Um, there's ample space to um, spread out along the park. That way you're social distancing while you're here enjoying your food. Um, just to give you an idea, here is the parking lot that shows all of the food truck lines. So you can see that if you're standing at one of these cones, the, the next line is very far from you. It's about 25 to 30 feet of distance between each one of those cones. Um, so we are able to socially distance here um, and still enjoy the food trucks. Um, so coming to the end of the cones here will be where the food truck is located. Um, and then you can see the exit signs then beyond that um, to exit the food truck area. Wow, that looks, uh, that looks great, Megan. And, and I think the key here is safety, uh, space, we're outdoors, there's plenty of room. I think people should feel very comfortable coming out uh, with their families, uh, uh, waiting patiently in line and, and having an opportunity to try all these great uh, food trucks. As you say, they're, they're, they're going to be 15, and we are encouraging people to check out the menu in advance. So you want to come with an idea of which line you want to get into. And um, if uh, people are wondering, this is the, uh, the north uh, parking lot there on City Island that's closer to the, uh, the stadium. The uh, south lot on the um, other side of Market Street, which is where the parking garage is, that will be open for parking. So you can park on part of City Island and walk over to this uh, this section here. Well, well, thanks, Megan. That was great. Uh, it gives us a little perspective of what we're seeing. It's different. It's not uh, not what people are expecting uh, from Riverfront, and uh, and we're not going to have tables set up. This is really a grab and go type phenomenon. You get your food, and then hopefully uh, you can take it and have a nice picnic with your with your family. Is there any anything else you'd like to add? Exactly. Um, just one thing to keep in mind, if you are planning to order for multiple trucks, um, you may want to split your party up to um, stand in the socially distanced lines. Um, you will have to exit upon each food truck's line. Um, so if you are planning to order from multiple trucks, you will have to re-enter the area um, and again stand in the lines to receive your food, just like you would in Riverfront Park. Okay, Megan, okay. thank you. Uh, good luck uh, continuing with the setup. Look forward to, uh, to seeing it uh, filled with people and families enjoying themselves safely tomorrow. So great. And I know what line I'm going to be getting in because uh, it is incredibly uh, popular in my family to uh, visit the wonderful Doughhead Waffles food truck. And I am pleased to say that we have Kristen and Drew Cordell from Doughheads joining us, uh, joining us now. Um, uh, I love Doughheads, and we're going to talk about uh, the offerings that you have. But uh, 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 Kristen and Drew, can you tell us a little bit about uh, um, some of the other food trucks and, and what people are going to be able to uh, sample and enjoy if they come out on the 4th of July? Welcome. Hello. Um, yeah, so the food includes, yeah, 15 different trucks, uh, barbecue, tacos, cheesesteaks, lobster rolls, stuffed waffles, of course, um, stuffed mm. pretzels as well. Not from us, but from someone else. Uh, cookie dough, crab cakes, nachos, homemade pasta, pierogies, fried chicken, and a lot more. And then there's also some festival favorites like funnel cakes, fried Oreos, and then farm show milkshakes are also available. Mm. And I guess um, the other part event like format was kind of touched on by Megan. So definitely um, encouraged to have a picnic and to take uh, your own blanket and chairs and then go to Riverfront Park or City Island. And then definitely check out the foodie guide beforehand, which is available on the Harrisburg PA.gov website. So you know what food you want to eat beforehand. 
Yeah, you've got yeah, so yeah. many people have so many great options. Uh, it can be hard, and they can split the party up and order from multiple food trucks, which I'm, uh, may be what we're what, what, what we're going to do. But uh, it's a great great opportunity once you're done with the food food. Uh, ordering. You can then make your way onto City Island. You can go over the Walnut Street Bridge. You can go to Riverfront Park. You can go to the upper level or the lower level. Um, there's a lot of places to, uh, so there's miles to spread out and enjoy enjoy your food outdoors with your family. So I um, hope everyone will check out that, that foodie guide, and there's really something to eat for everyone. But let's talk waffles. Um, I, I, I love your waffles, and uh, I, I don't know what, what, what's my favorite, but um, uh, talk a little bit about uh, what you're preparing and uh, what people expect if they, if they come check out Doughheads. Yeah, well, thanks, thanks for uh, your, your support. Um, the product we serve is called a Wocket, and it stands for a Waffle Pocket. It's a product that uh, we made up. Uh, we're the only ones in the country that, that do something like it. So it starts with a, a yeast risen dough that we give time. We make a dough and then let, let it rise for like an hour. Um, we cook it on a cast iron waffle maker that's like 30 pounds. It's super heavy. Uh, and then we create a pocket in that waffle and then we stuff it with sweet and savory fillings. Pretty much anything you can think of. We're always doing different stuff. Um, we make a lot of our fillings uh, in-house. We make a homemade gravy for our chicken and gravy waffle. That's one of our most popular savory uh, waffles. Um, we make a, a cinna waffle, which is stuffed with uh, cinna cream that we make in-house. It's a cinnamon cream cheese mixture, and then we roll it in cinnamon sugar. That's one of our most popular sweet waffles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess people have to decide sweet or savory or both. But uh, the nice thing about uh, about your waffles is they're very portable. You can uh, you can take them and enjoy them, and they're really best um, best fresh and hot and uh, right uh, right off the truck. So it's it's a type of food that really you have to come to a festival to really uh, come and enjoy. What's um, what each of you? What 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 are your favorite uh, um, uh, wackets? Um, my favorite is the the buffalo chicken. That's a shredded chicken with a creamy buffalo sauce, which we make in house, and then we get some uh, blue cheese crumbles and uh, stick a celery heart right right in the pocket. Great. I guess Great. Uh, mine. I'll have to be boring and be go sweet, but I I like the um, the uh, cinna waffle just because it's our cinna cream is delicious. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, we okay. have a Nutella waffle, which is great, and you've got traditional uh, peanut butter and jelly. I mean, you can get everything here, which is which is just uh, just fantastic. So it should uh, address uh, anyone's culinary desires. Now, um, uh, uh, can you talk a little bit about how important this event is uh, to your business, and and how uh, perhaps uh, food trucks in general maybe have been uh, impacted by the uh, coronavirus? Um, well, we've definitely been impacted and just kind of like shifted what our focus was because we started doing neighborhoods and then, uh, well, Megan and other people have already helped us by spacing everything six feet out, but we did that and we've actually been on all the neighborhoods we were doing pre-ordering over our square site. Uh, so it just really shifted our business, um, but we're really happy that you're still having the 4th of July festival because it was one of our biggest events last year and, um, yeah, there's a lot of trucks. It's awesome. So we're happy that you're finding a safe way to do that. Um, yeah, so thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I, I know probably a lot of events have been canceled, and uh, you know we're trying to persevere with this event because we believe we can do it safely, and we know how important it is for um, for businesses like yours and for everyone to, um, to to have these events be successful and safe at the same time. So I hope we're not going to run out of waffles. Is there any is there any opportunity a chance that that could happen? Yeah, no. I think we okay. did last. Okay, year. I know. Oh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, we do know a lot. <laughs> Well, well uh, uh, my, my advice is if people want to be sure to get uh, the waffle favor of their choice, they should come out early. Don't save it to the last possible minute. And uh, we should be so fortunate as to have, uh, have you run out of waffles by 9 o'clock. That, uh, that would be a great thing. So thanks. Thanks for joining us. And we're 
Yeah, we're going to turn now to Devin Drabeck, who is the Director of Communications and Marketing for our friends at Explore HBG. Devin, always a pleasure to see you. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the July 4th fireworks, which, uh, as, as I like to say every year, really are um, the finest fireworks display you can find anywhere happening right here in central Pennsylvania. But um, talk a little bit about what people can expect uh, from the fireworks themselves, the main attraction. Sure, absolutely. So the July 4th fireworks are going to begin, like the mayor said, at approximately 9.15 p.m. It's that perfect time where it just gets dark enough. It's going to be a 15-minute show, so a pretty big show this year, and it's launched from the tip of City Island. Now, there's many different viewpoints for watching the fireworks, including miles of Riverfront Park, and the Lower River Walk is also a great spot. Reservoir Park and locations on the West Shore also offer a good view. Just remember to bring your own chairs, blankets, places to sit. Wherever you decide to watch from, remember to maintain a six foot social distancing space from others and avoid gathering in large groups just for the safety of everyone involved. Now the fireworks display will also be available via a live stream on Facebook and on channel 20 for those who wish to watch from the comfort of their own home. Yeah, that's great. I'm glad that we're able to uh, uh, to offer a virtual opportunity for people to see the fireworks. I think that's uh, terrific. And as you mentioned, uh, one of the great things about doing them over the Susquehanna is that you can view them from both shores. You can even view them from the high point in the city, which is, of course, Reservoir Park. That's a neat way to see uh, the fireworks in perspective. Tell me, Devin, where are you going to watch the fireworks from? Do you have a favorite spot? I like the lower walk the steps built in right there is just perfect and i love seeing the fireworks reflect off the river yes yes and uh, of course uh, if people haven't been in a year or two they might not know but we did renovate the lower river walk and uh, added a new beautiful concrete walkway so it's a lovely place to to spread out and enjoy i'm i'm thinking of watching them from uh, an elevated location as yet undetermined in harrisburg we have so many really neat buildings i'm thinking we'll get up high but over the years i've enjoyed watching them from the rooftop of my home to the uh, uh one year at the uh in the stadium and uh, uh from uh, even from city hall so uh i will i will be out and uh, trying to figure out the best place to enjoy my picnic with the family it's going to be it's going to be a lot of fun so Thank you, Devin, for, uh, for joining us, and thanks for continuing to promote this event and explore HBG. Maybe you can talk a little bit about, um, from, a, uh, from a regional perspective, uh, can you speak a little bit to how, um, how the, the, the health issues, uh, the health pandemic has, has affected uh, tourism and um, marketing for the region? Sure. I mean, we've certainly had to get creative in what we're marketing. It's an ever-adapting situation. Um, so... Obviously, we're promoting more virtual events. Um, we were at the beginning. Now there are a good mixture of virtual and in-person events. And people just have to remember that when they are in person, to constantly remember to social distance. And now we have the mask regulations here. So um, we are able to do a lot more. We're getting back into retail. And we're having a lot of fun marketing some of the specials that our retail establishments in the city are running. Um, there's some great dining specials happening now. Um, both inside and outside, lots of pop-up patios and things like that. So um, there's a lot going on. ExploreHBG.com is a great place to go to get up-to-the-date or up-to-the-minute information about what's open and what's going on. Um, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's always changing, but that means there's something new happening pretty much every week in Harrisburg. Well, thank you for that. And I do encourage people to check out Explore HBG. And I think we have a lot to be proud of. This is an editorial comment. But in Pennsylvania, we, we really have done a good job by taking this very seriously and going slowly. Uh, now that we're reopening, um, we're, we're, uh, we're in a better position than, than, than other states and other areas of the country. That said, uh, we are not through the woods. And we have to be, take these things seriously. And we have to focus on the things we can control, like wearing a mask and social distancing. And we can do those those things and support um, events and activities, uh, I believe, at the same time. It's just going to require um, con consistent messaging. Uh, and I know we have more people from the city of Harrisburg working this event than we've ever had before. So on the one hand, it's it's a slightly smaller event, but we're going to have more and more ambassadors and others out there uh, reminding people to wear a mask, reminding them to social distance, and trying to keep this event safe. So thank you, Devin. And uh, I want to talk a little bit now uh, about uh, some of the virtual activities that are going on. Again, we uh, we try to uh, 
Uh, this is a hybrid event. We tried it pretty much in all virtual arts fests. Now we're doing a combination of in-person and virtual events for the 4th of July. And we are joined by Akrit Mehta, who is a branch manager um, with uh, MidPen Bank. And Akrit, thank you for, thank you for joining us. And uh, can you talk a little bit about uh, some of the virtual activities, especially um, the virtual activities that are available for kids and families on the 4th? Absolutely, Jeff uh, The virtual family fun activities will be available on the website and the Facebook event. They include a patriotic pop rocket activity provided by the Vedika Center for Science and the Arts, a bubble making activity provided by Challenge Island, performance by Mickey Spain and a Rules of COVID Sing Along, and theater basics class provided by the Gamut Theater. You can also watch the video starting July 4th at a time convenient for you at harrisburgpa.gov slash July 4th or follow the Facebook event to watch them at scheduled times throughout the day. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Thank, thank you. you for letting us know about that. Uh, I have to say, I, I one of the great things about all of our events at the City of Harrisburg is that we're constantly trying to be family-centered, and we're trying to have activities for, for all ages. And I know if uh, your kids are like my kids or like uh, other kids, there's a, a lot of a lot of pent-up energy, a lot of desire to um, uh, to do things uh, together. And I think it's, it's clever that we've got the pop-up bottle rockets or the pop-up uh, bubble activities, and uh, that's that's going to be great. I'm also glad to see that they're, um, that our friends at Gamut are, are doing online theater classes, and I know they're doing that as part of their summer as well. So um, thanks to you, and thanks to MidPen for, uh, for your support in uh, sponsoring this event. And you mentioned that we also are having some live music, so I'm pleased to say that we're joined by Mickey Spain, an entertainer. And uh, uh, Mickey, can you talk a little bit about um, uh, some of the some of the virtual music performances that we can expect? Uh, absolutely, um, my good friend Steve Schlegel over at Shenanigator Entertainment. He's uh, he's lined up ten bands that are going to have virtual concerts uh, that'll be available throughout the throughout the day. Um, in addition to myself, there'll be Casey Walton, Hunter Root, Dillweed, uh, my good friend Sean Sattel. Anthony Cannon, uh, the Justin Angelo Band, and forgive me, Olivia Faraba. I don't know if I pronounced that name uh, correctly or not, but I apologize if I didn't. Uh, Grant Bryan and Dandy. And the digital program is available, and it's gonna, it can give you a description of the band and what type of music um, that, that they're going to be playing. The, uh, the videos will be available on the website, harrisburgpa.gov site. Um, so you can watch them at any time, or if you want to follow it live, you can uh, do it through the Facebook event and watch them at the scheduled times during the day. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's Thanks. So uh, again, uh, you can go to harrisburgpa.gov, which is the main city website, and go to slash uh, July 4th. Um, or you can go to the Facebook event. I know a lot of people uh, follow, uh, follow along via Facebook. Um, uh, can you talk a little bit about the different genres and types of music that all these performers represent? Sure. Uh, I uh, will be performing a uh, set of kids' songs. I write a lot of children's songs, so all my material that uh, will be played will be my original children's uh, songs. It's, and I'm not familiar with a whole bunch of the bands, but there's, um, I know there's a lot of uh, folk involved, um, you know, folk music. Sure, um, sure type stuff so it's all it's all going to be family friendly so great great great, great. and uh i know we're going to return to you at the end for a very special performance but uh, do you want to preview it a little bit what uh, what will we have to look forward to well i could do a number of things i could do uh, uh, one of my children's songs or i can do uh the nice woody guthrie song this land is your land Ooh. Ooh. um yeah. Well, well, you know, well, we, you know, we, we could use technology and have our friends on Facebook uh, 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 let us know in the comment section if you're up for that. Uh, should we have a little little contest? All right. Is it Woody Guthrie? Is it an original children's song, or uh, is it uh, is it something else? Uh, give us a, a, an upvote or a, uh, a vote on Facebook Live, and we'll be back uh, to you. Thanks, Mickey. Um, I now want to introduce uh, John Campbell, who is the Director of uh, Business Owner Engagements for the Wilmington Trust, which is a part of our friends at the M&T family. 
Um, uh, thanks, uh, thanks for for joining us, John. And uh, let's uh, let let's talk uh, again because this is so important about uh, some of the health and safety protocols that people are going to experience if they come out. Um, again, uh, we believe this can be a, a safe, uh, family-friendly event for everyone. Um, but uh, talk a little bit more uh, about uh, about what people should expect. Thank you, Mayor. So, as uh, Megan said, and many other folks have said, yeah, it's important to practice uh, social distancing. We talked about the cones being six feet apart uh, in the food truck lines, and that we're going to be asking all attendees to stand at the marks, you know, to ensure proper social distancing. Uh, there will be social distancing encouragers, right? Individuals mm -hmm. that will be monitoring the lines uh, to ensure proper social distancing. Um, and as Megan said, after receiving your food, we ask that you promptly exit the line to allow the line to keep moving. Uh, there will be one point of entry. Uh, there'll be one exit to the food truck area uh, so that it'll create, create a one-way route to help maintain social distancing. Um, and if folks plan uh, to picnic with uh, their food in the park, uh, or watch the fireworks in a public space, uh, we, as Megan said, and we all agree, uh, to respect those around you and stay six feet apart uh, to maintain social distancing guidelines. And also, um, uh, there will not be uh, seating in the parking lots, right? No seating uh, in, in the parking lots. Uh, and, and finally, um, yeah, practice social distancing you know, at all times. Those are just some of the things, Mayor. Yeah, yeah. No, that's yep. great. And uh, I know we're encouraging uh, credit card usage whenever uh, possible. And uh, again, uh, masks are required. They're required by the governor's order. We're going to have people uh, out there. You, what do you had a good term from them? You called them social distance encouragers. We will have social distance encouragers out there. That represents a large number of city employees that have signed up to work this event from all sorts of different departments. Uh, departments that'll be out there to sp speak to folks. Um, do you uh, are you, uh, you want to talk a little bit about the hand washing stations? So, uh, as you said, Mayor, wearing face mask is required, um, you know, while waiting in line, just out of the respect and health safety for those around you. So when it comes to hand washing, there'll be hand washing stations available at the exit of the food truck area and along uh, Riverfront uh, Park. Uh, as always, wash your hands with soap and water often and for at least how long? 20 seconds each time. Uh, we also recommend folks bringing their own hand sanitizers uh, to use often and where water is not available. Yeah, thanks. The, uh, the, the hand washing stations have worked out well for us uh, so far in the city, and we'll, we'll be concentrating more down in the, in the main park area. I've seen the operational plan. There will also be um, uh, outdoor facilities, uh, porta potties for, for people to use. And uh, we just want to encourage everyone to use good hygiene and, and think about um, uh, good practices like hand washing and social distancing. So uh, thanks, for, thanks for joining us, John. Thanks for Wilmington Trust and m and Our partnership uh, with you all has always been uh, a strong and important one. So we appreciate your continued support. Um, we are also uh, fortunate that this year, the 4th of July, is on a Saturday. And we have uh, we've just recently announced that our, our new Saturdays in the City outdoor dining promotion is going to be extended uh, throughout the rest of the summer, all the way through July and August. And this is a great opportunity for people to come out and uh, uh, enjoy uh, the festival by patronizing one of our, our local businesses, eating outdoors, and then uh, wandering over to Riverfront Park and Front Street and enjoying the fireworks uh, as, a, as a wonderful uh, way to sort of um, cap off the night. So we're joined by Todd Vanderwoody, who's our partner at the uh, Harrisburg Downtown Improvement District. And, uh, you know, Todd, uh, talk a little bit about the Saturdays in the city. Uh, it's been a phenomenal success, but maybe we'll be having new people that will be coming in specifically for the 4th of July. What will, what will they see when they come to Harrisburg? Well, thank you, Mayor. You know, it's been great. Um, and everybody talks about the social distancing here today. And I can say that the Saturday nights in the city uh, really started in June. And it, it, it's in partnership with the city of Harrisburg and the Harrisburg Downtown Improvement District.
to really practice that social distancing and allow our restaurants downtown um, to be able to serve more people at a safe distance, safe for the attendees. It's also safe for those uh, servers out there. Um, so they not only serve um, right out front of the restaurant on the sidewalk, they can also serve in the streets. And, and um, you know, we have 24 restaurants uh, that are participating and a list of those can be found on the website. Uh, the outdoor dining, um, they're serving from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. And as you mentioned, Mayor, you know, we're happy to say that, um, you know, the city, the downtown improvement district are going to continue this through the end of August, uh, which I think is, is great. It's very important. Uh, for those that have been down here, I, I think one of the things is, is that there's a lot of restaurants to choose from. Um, I've spoke to a lot of restaurant uh, owners and they're going to have different menus, different themes as we go along into the summer. Uh, so the hardest choice, the hardest decision that you have to make is which of these great restaurants you want to you know, sit outside and eat at um, this summer. Um, so it's again, it's a great atmosphere that we have. Now, in order to make this happen, we do have some uh, street closures um, that will begin at 2 p.m. And just some things that um, everyone should be aware of. So the street closures, um, Second Street uh, from Market to Pine, right here on Restaurant Row, uh, State Street from Church to Second, uh, westbound only, North Street from Susquehanna to Third, uh, the westbound only there, North Street from Second to Buttonwood, Third Street from Market to Chestnut, and then Canoy Street down in Shypoke. So those are a list of the road closures um, that we have for this Saturdays in the City event. And you know, I, I do want to mention one other thing. Um, you know, real close to downtown, and Megan's out there on City Island right now. We talked about the food trucks, but in addition to the outdoor dining and everything else going on. Uh, I did want to mention our friends over at Water Golf. Um, they're going to be open uh, from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Uh, the City Island Railroad uh, will also be open from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. And Cafe Huey over on the island will be open from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, so just a few more of, of the things that is going on, a lot happening here. Uh, it's great to have the 4th of July on a, on a Saturday evening. We can continue our, our uh, Saturdays in the city and all these great events going on. Yeah, th yeah. thanks, Todd. So uh, so the Saturdays in the city is, uh, is really a, a, a dinner uh, promotion. So uh, if people are coming down for, uh, for, for lunch, they won't, uh, they won't experience any of the street closures at that time. They can come on over to City Island. They can park on City Island. They can enjoy uh, the food trucks. Uh, if um, if they're if they're coming down after two o'clock, uh, it is true that we'll we'll shut down Second Street, but Front Street will still be open until uh, closer to the fireworks time, and Third Street is mostly open, and Mar uh, and Market Street, which will go from City Island up to Third, is a great way to get about. So, the uh, street closures won't stop people from being able to get uh, around and about in the city. And um, uh, one thing uh, we might recommend is that if you're going to one of the downtown restaurants that are participating in Saturday nights in the city, you might want a reservation, right? Yes, that's correct. A lot of the restaurants are taking reservations. Um, it's always good that it's been very, very popular. Uh, I know there has been some waits, um, you know, uh, people waiting in lines and stuff. Again, um, you know, we do encourage the social distancing, which has been great being able to set up tables out out in the street and it makes just a fantastic atmosphere. Um, I always liken it, liken it to an Italian style street cafe here on second street down restaurant row. And, um, you know, it's just, it's been a, been a very popular event and we're glad we can continue through the end of the summer. Yeah. Yeah. And I was pleased to see it looks like stocks on second, maybe double dipping here. They're, they're, they're not only open for the Saturday nights, but they've got a food truck. Were you aware of that? Aware of that? Yes, yes. Yep. Uh, Stocks, Stocks has done some great things. Um, you know, really kind of went outside the box. I know their chef there, Chef Jesse, had a had a uh, where you could buy stuff from Stocks, the ingredients, and cook at home. Um, you know, it was fantastic. The ideas that have come out of this, and you know, we talked about everybody really adjusting to the circumstances with with uh, COVID nineteen. And it's just an example of, of a restaurant really kind of going above and beyond and, and doing different things. 
Yeah, I'm excited yeah, I'm for excited. them. They uh, came on uh, earlier uh, uh, about a month ago, and we're talking about their jerk chicken recipe. So now uh, people can experience it if they if they uh, stop by the food truck line or if they uh, come to Saturday nights in the city. So uh, good for them. Uh, we've got a lot of room, a lot of room for uh, people to come and spread out and enjoy all sorts of different uh, activities. Um, I mentioned that uh, uh, Front Street will be closing later in the evening uh, to allow for even more social distancing for uh, for the fireworks display. But just remember, the real focus is uh, both the uh, downtown improvement district, Second Street area, and City Island for uh, for this uh, wonderful Fourth of July event. And I get to talk a little bit about parking, uh, which is uh, which is always important. We talked about how parking is available on City Island on half of that lot, and you can get very close to the um, food truck vendors. The parking cost for City Island is only five dollars, so um, consider parking there, uh, leaving your car, and uh, walking walking over to the city via the uh, pedestrian bridge there. Um, from City Island, uh, but uh, also be aware that uh, the 4th of July is a holiday, so there is no meter enforcement anywhere in the city. So if you can find a meter space, you do not need to feed it, and you do not need to fear uh, getting a ticket, uh, no matter uh, where you're parking. If you want covered garage parking, and that's uh, that some people do, uh, we encourage you to try the Market Square Parking Garage, where our friends at SP Plus will have a discounted flat rate of just $10 and you can park there for the event uh, in the garage, at the Market Square Garage. And again, Market Street is, is going to be open and uh, easily accessible throughout the whole event. Um, and uh, if you're looking for handicap parking, we will have handicap parking available on City Island uh, right near the food trucks uh, as, it, as it usually is there. So there is accessible parking also available there uh, for this event. As always, we couldn't do what we do without our, our sponsors. And our title sponsor for this 4th of July event is Visit Hershey Harrisburg. They have been uh, tremendous par partners along with our marketing sponsor, Explore HBG. And you uh, heard from Devin a little bit earlier. Um, our fireworks sponsor uh, this year, as in the past, is PHFA, the Pennsylvania Housing Finance Agency. And uh, last year, we talked about how their addition was getting ready to um, open. And now, if you come down, you can see the beautiful new addition to the PHFA building right there overlooking Riverfront Park. The event sponsor, MidPen Bank, again, a big thank you to them for, uh, for, for coming and talking a little bit about uh, the activities for the event. Our supporting and hand-washing station sponsor is UPMC Pinnacle. So a uh, big shout out to UPMC and their Healthy Harrisburg initiatives and for helping sponsor these additional hand-washing stations that will make it possible for people to practice good hygiene throughout the entire event. Our supporting sponsor, M&T Bank, and uh, I imagine their, their building from up on their building is also a great place to, to see uh, the fireworks. Our entertainment sponsor is uh, Shenanigator Entertainment. Thank you to Shenanigators. And we have community sponsors. You've uh, already heard from the Harrisburg Downtown Improvement District and Todd, but also want to mention Capital Blue Cross. And I want to thank our parking sponsor, which is uh, SP Plus Parking, for, uh, for really working with us and, uh, and helping make that flat rate uh, uh, garage possibility for the, the market uh, garage. So um, just as a, a final word of closing before we hear from you, the audience, on uh, Facebook Live, in case there are any questions, um, I do want to uh, remind people that this is a special event for this year. It's not uh, the normal uh, way we've done Fourth of July in the past, and it's not a format that we expect to keep for next year. Hopefully, we will be back in Riverfront Park with uh, more than 50 food trucks and um, uh, thousands of people, and we're looking forward to uh, a new uh, 4th of July celebration in 2021. But for this year, it's a great opportunity, and we're going to be looking closely at the success of this event to help us determine what to do with Capona, which is our end of summer uh, festival of sparkling waters here at the city. So come out and help us make this event a, a success, and let us know that, uh, uh, that you've enjoyed it, and, uh, and give us some support for coming back with uh, with a with a similar uh, uh, capona later uh, later in the summer, so Moman, uh, how are we doing on Facebook Live? Do we have questions. I feel like we've explained things very very well, but perhaps there are some. 
I think I, I agree. The explanations have been so uh, detailed that we're not getting many questions, but I can uh, provide some comments that we're getting. Uh -huh. um, regarding your early, earlier mention about the GIS map, uh, Kay is uh, a fan of this map, and she says it's the, an idea provided by the YPOC. Oh, yes. And, uh, she's and those are the uh, young professionals mm -hmm. of color, and uh, I do want to thank them and uh, shared the map with them a little bit earlier, and they're going to continue to spread the word. Uh, it was their suggestion to map it, and uh, I, as I say, you could see from that map uh, real patterns. And, and I know that one of the issues in dealing with the fireworks has been uh, hard to, you know, people hear them all the time, and there's a perception that they're everywhere, but in reality, perhaps there, there are certain targeted areas that if we focus on those areas, we can, we can really make an impact. So thanks for the comments on the map, and, and hooray for the young professionals of color. Mm -hmm. uh, next we have, um, let's see. I saw, oh, here, here we go. Ken uh, is saying we're ready to rock and roll, um, referencing Bake My Day Cafe okay. uh, as well. And let's see, our other comments are about the song choice. Ah, yes, of course. So, well, we, we challenge. So is it going to be Woody Guthrie? All right. So Woody Guthrie, This Land is Your Land, or a children's song. We got, I think, just one for children's song, and uh -huh. the rest uh, looks like it's for uh, This it's, Land is Your Land. It's for Woody Guthrie. Of yeah. course, Woody Guthrie was going to win. <laughs> uh, well, um, I think then, on that note, uh, Mickey, we're going to send it back to you, and uh, a little bit of This Land is Your Land to play us out. As I would walk in, that ribbon of highway I saw above me, that endless skyway I saw below me, that golden valley. This land was made for you and me. This land is your land, this land is my land, from California. To the New York Islands, from the Redwood Forest, to the Gulf Stream waters, this land was made for you and me. Well, I roamed and I rambled, and I followed my footsteps, to the sparkling sands of her diamond deserts, and all around me. Voice was sounding, oh, this land was made for you and me. This land is your land, this land is my land. From California to the New York Islands, from the Redwood Forest to the Gulf Stream waters, this land was made for you and me. Well, the sun was shining as I was strolling, as the wheat fields waving and the dust clouds rolling, the fog was lifting, a voice was chanting, oh, this land was made for you and me. This land is your land, this land is my land. From California to the New York Islands, from the Redwood Forest to the Gulf Stream waters, oh, this land was made for you and me. Yes, this land was made for you and me. Bravo, bravo, from California to City Island, I would say. Uh, thank, thanks so much, and uh, thanks to everybody for watching. Again, this is Mayor Eric Papenfus. Thanks for joining us for a community conversation here on Facebook Live. We'll see you tomorrow in the city of Harrisburg for a safe and wonderful food truck and fireworks celebration of July 4th.